Hi everybody, Jay Edward here, and tonight I want to talk about a little bit of the dark side of the art industry. That's right, I want to talk about art counterfeiting, art theft, copyright violations, AI and NFTs. And rather than come to you as if I have some big huge solution to artists dealing with all of this stuff, I really just wanted to share some of my experiences and I wanted to put this out there conversationally so that anybody who had thoughts on it could hit me up in the comments below this video and either share their story or talk about their feelings on the issue. All right, first of all, I'm going to talk about some of my specific battles. Um, all artists, look, in this modern world, if you put your art out there, you have to put it on social media and you run the risk of it being immediately stolen by you know, eight and a half billion people in the world, right? <laughs> it's, uh, it's the price of doing business. And uh, as of yet, I don't think any of us has some sort of perfect solution. Some of my individual experiences. Um, I create original acrylic paintings um, on canvases, and wood panels, stuff like that. I sell those original paintings. I sell prints of those original paintings. I create tarot and oracle decks. I've created six so far. I've got another one on the way here in just a few minutes, uh, which will be out. I create tapestries and a very limited number of apparel, t-shirts, hoodies, and such. That's really the scope of my artistic journey so far. Um, all of those, almost every piece of art that I've ever made that was any good at all, and sometimes even the ones that weren't so good, stolen. <laughs> I go on social media, I post it on social media, and either five minutes later or five months later, um, I'll see it being counterfeited, being copyright violated on somebody else's shirt. I'll see it on a Facebook ad for somebody else's no-name you know, shell company. Um, it is a tough battle. All of us artists nowadays, we, we all face it together. Um, let me talk right now about some of the culprits of this and this is uh I think most artists probably know this already but this part is more for the people who don't know who don't know much about the art industry culprits of art theft and counterfeiting the big craze now Timu big huge company based out of China also uh, I think they have a, a layer in Boston and another one in Ireland Timu I want to tell you guys, look, I know you love those low prices. Almost every piece of art, every t-shirt, art print, deck of cards on there is a counterfeit version of some hardworking artist's work. Okay? I got tipped by an accidental Facebook ad. Somebody sent me and said, hey, isn't this your art? I looked into it, and I started scrolling, started scrolling. And, um, you know, I get the appeal it's a super inexpensive place to shop, right? You know, um, bargains, you know, you can find art at 10% of where you would find it on a legit site. But let me tell you guys, if you buy something from Timu, you're buying counterfeited junk. I'm sorry, but it's true, especially if it's art. All of my six card decks have been counterfeited by Asian uh, based companies selling them on Timu. Art prints, my cat series, my haunted cat series, been copied out of t-shirts, posters, all kinds of stuff on Timu. Uh, every day, I see new ones pop up. It's more than I can even possibly hope to fight. Timu is not the only culprit. Not even close. AliExpress. Some of you may have heard of this. Some may have not. It's the same thing. Super, super cheap prices. Very alluring to the consumer who, you know, doesn't want to spend a lot on art. The same thing. They are counterfeiting. They are copying. It's blatant copyright violations. And uh, it's a freight train of stolen goods. And it's really hard to combat. Uh, smaller, maybe lesser known sites. Mercari is one. And then uh, as my followers on Facebook and Instagram have been so kind to point out, almost every day there's a, a pop-up ad on Facebook or thousands of pop-up ads actually, selling t-shirts, sweatpants, hoodies, inexpensive art prints, 
tapestries, mugs, stolen art on all of it. My stuff has been stolen, but I've seen ads with other well-known and maybe not so well-known artists on there. If you see a Facebook ad and it has uh, some kooky name, you know, and maybe some misspellings in the descriptions, guys, this is stolen stuff. It's copyright violations. Um, if you buy from it, you need to know what you're getting. Uh, you're not really supporting the artist if you buy this stuff. And sometimes even the big guns get into this. I operate mostly on Etsy and Amazon. And operating on both of those platforms has shown me the enormous amount of copyright violation and intellectual property violation and counterfeiting that goes on on those sites. Every day I find myself um, issuing a copyright violation warning to somebody who's stolen my decks and had them printed for themselves. I've had people buy the deck from me, photograph each individual card, print it for themselves at some super cheap printer, selling a deck that's half the number of cards and cheap you know, packaging for 20% of the price. Um, and I'm saying, I'm not saying this, that this is me alone who's facing this. It's everybody. If you make art, you put it out there, you're facing this. So, okay. That sounds like a big, huge complaint. It's really not. I kind of knew this going in. Um, let's talk about some of the strategies that artists, myself and others, have used or attempted to use to, to battle this stuff. Um, one of the big things I get every time I post a new piece of art, um, I will invariably get somebody who says, hey, why don't you watermark it? Okay, not a bad idea, uh, a valid idea. Um, here's one of the big problems, okay, especially on Facebook, but really on any of the social media thing. If you have any sort of text on your image, so let's say I post a painting and it's got a watermark with my name on it or something, uh, that social media site is going to crush you and the algorithm. They do not want text. They want you to pay to have text on it because to them, that's an advertisement, okay? So watermarks immediately are killing an artist's reach if they put it on their thing. I've seen some really, really good big name artists out there uh, put up a great new piece, which is awesome. They watermark it, they get no engagement whatsoever. And then you got a schlep like me Put a cat painting out there without any watermark it and I get you know pretty decent engagement so it's damn if you do damn if you don't if you put it out there without a watermark you're running the risk of being counterfeited um, if you put it out there with that one or with one rather um, you're crushing yourself in the algorithm tough right all right another strategy is paying for copyright now technically by law here in the states anyway you created a piece of artistic work, it's automatically copyrighted. But you can take it a step further and register it at cost with the US government. Um, you can register copyright on each individual piece of art you do. Well, that's prohibitive for most artists, for almost all artists who aren't millionaires, to copyright every single piece of art they create and put it out on the web. Um, that's a non-starter, okay? You just, you just can't do it. Um, another thing is trademarks. So I have my company name's trademarked, my card decks are all trademarked, and you would think that would offer me some level of copyright protection. It does not. All that does is prevent people from publishing, counterfeiting, stealing my material, and putting my company name, Shadow Art Finds, on it. If they don't do that, they're not in breach of trademark, and I can't really fight them that way. So these all sound like strategies uh, that would be good and beneficial to fight against copywriters and art thieves. They're just not. They're, they're not ideal. So I want to talk about what my personal strategy actually is. If not those three things, what do I actually do? Um, and of course, in the comments below, I want to see what you guys do too. Like other artists out there, I want to know what your personal strategy is. Mine uh, goes like this. If the copyright, if the, the AI copy, if the counterfeit is based outside of the US or Canada, I pretty much feel powerless and I have started to just let it go. Believe me, I have tried. I have fought the Timus, I have fought the AliExpresses, 
I have fought the uh, Facebook pop-up companies, most of which are not based in the States. Um, I sent them all kinds of letters and messages and it does not work. You might get one taken down only for 10 more to pop up or these pop-up shops will change their name and sell your art on their material. And uh, you know, you can't really effectively fight it and focus on creating good art at the same time. You, you kind of have to pick, am I gonna paint today or am I gonna spend 12 hours in front of a computer battling Timu? who's probably not even gonna answer any. So my policy outside of the States, outside of Canada, is I let it go. And, I, and, and believe me, every day, messages come into my inbox and say, hey, I, I found you know your cat painting is on a hoodie from Timu for $4. Is that yours? And I'm like, of course that's not mine. I would I've never sell on Timu, at least of all for $4. I wouldn't do it. Um, and I have to tell them, like, you know, I'm just going to let it go. I can't fight it. Now, for stateside, okay, you have much more powerful protections. And maybe some artists can back me up on this, and maybe some have different experiences. But if somebody stateside is breaching your copyright, whatever your art form is, music, physical art, anything, you have a much stronger ground to fight. Now, I'm not saying you go and sue the heck out of them or anything, but you can approach them um, in a much more forceful manner with the power of the law behind you and say, hey, take that down. That's mine. You know, here's proof that it's mine. Um, remove it. And me personally, I've battled several hundred of Etsy sellers based here in the States that have copied my card decks, copied my art, put it on their, you know, their mugs and their t-shirts. Every day I'm like, all right, I gotta go to war with these people. <laughs> and, uh, you know, sometimes I win, sometimes I don't. But you have a much stronger ability to fight in North America than you do in other countries where the copyright laws either don't exist or they, there's just no real avenue to chase them down and get the stuff removed. Uh, if somebody else has a different experience of that, you know, if I would love to hear it. <laughs> Message me, put it down in the comments. I want to hear all about it. Um, all right, a couple other things. Let's talk about briefly about AI and NFTs. Um, this next part I want to talk about AI. This is again for consumers of art, more so than it is for other artists. I think artists know about AI pretty well. If... Um, you guys are using AI software to make your Facebook avatar, to post a cool new picture, you know, on your on your feed, to uh, use it to make a, a shirt or, uh, you know, for you or your family or whatever. If you're using AI to do that, I hate to break it to you, but you are participating in art theft. Um, most of the time, vast majority of the time. I understand that it's not malicious. You saw a cool program, typically tap a few prompts, and you thought, cool art, no harm, no foul, right? You're participating in grand theft larceny of art, okay? Because all the images that feed these AI programs come from real hardworking artists who are not paid a single dime to have their art thrown into the blender of AI. So that's just sort of a public service announcement. Do with it what you will. NFTs. <clears throat> Any artist on the planet who's been on Facebook or Instagram for longer than five minutes knows you're going to get messages from digital creators, NFT crypto bros, um, digital connoisseurs who want to pay you in Bitcoin or cryptocurrency to buy your art as an NFT. 100% of these NFT approaches are bogus. Not 99%, 100. They're either trying to scam you outright or steal your art for an absurdly low and useless price, okay? So NFTs, another non-starter, okay? Stay away, artists. Stay away, consumers. Do not buy them. Just my personal feeling. Um, 
So that's really it for the public announcements. Um, what I want to hear from you guys, if you could take the time, is in the comments or reach out to me on any of my social medias. And I want to know your thoughts, okay? We all, all of us that are genuine, we want to support artists because supporting artists enables them to make more art. Real, soulful, thoughtful, emotional art that is not created by an algorithm on the web. That's what we want, right? And I feel very strongly about supporting my fellow artists in this way. And whenever I can, I buy their art. Cheap, expensive, doesn't matter. Real art from the real artists. Um, and I think you guys, as you get more savvy and uh, we get deeper into the realm of AI and NFTs, I hope, it's my hope, that consumers of art, collectors, will start to recognize the difference between real art and like mid-journey art, okay? And, and all those companies like that. Um, it's my hope and my belief that eventually they will come around to do it. And I hope that listening to this video enables you to take that knowledge forth. Tell your friends, you know. Um, support an artist near you. Look, it doesn't have to be you buy a bunch of their stuff. It just means you have the real artist back, okay? You can distinguish the difference between a $3 counterfeited tarot deck on Timu, you know, and maybe a $30 real tarot deck at your local brick and mortar store or that you see handcrafted on Etsy. I want you guys to be able to determine the difference and I want really just genuinely to support the real artists out there. And that's what this is all about. We all know that it's gonna be really hard to fight every single instance of copyright violation or counterfeiting out there. It's, it's damn near impossible, we know this. But the sword we do have is to support real artists. And I will, and I hope you do too. I've been long-winded tonight, and I'm sorry about that. But I'm J. Edward Neal with Shadow Art Finds, and I'm going to keep pumping out these videos. And you guys have an awesome evening.